the amount of nostalgia packed into this little thing here is just brilliant. 1.3 megapixels. What? I was having a bit of a tidy up and having a look around and I came across, this is really excited about this, I came across my first ever digital camera. Let's have a look at that. There you go, there she is. An Olympus C920 zoom, um, 1.3 megapixels and at the time it was pretty good. Now we're talking, I, I, I can't quite remember, I think it was the year 2000, 2001, somewhere around there. But this is my first digital camera. Well, I was really excited to find it because, um, well, one, I thought I'd thrown it away. I thought it was long gone, I, you know, I hadn't seen it, it's just that it was buried somewhere in a box. I dug it out and was really, really pleased to see it. It was like, wow, that's crazy. So anyway, um, I opened it up and um, discovered that there's some corroded batteries in there. Let me just focus on that. Come on, camera, there you go. So you can see there, all sorts of corrosion going on with these batteries. These batteries have been in there for the last 18 years, 17, 18 years. Well, actually, probably not as long as that. Just since the last time I used it anyway, which was a long, long, long time ago. Um, so as far as I'm aware, this thing was still working. It didn't break. I can't remember it breaking or having not performed. So uh, what I'm going to do is clean it up and see if I can get it working again, get some new batteries in there and <clears throat> give it, you know, have a, have a bit of a play with it. See, see what she does. And I think what I'm going to do as well is dig out some old images, some of the first images that I made with this little beauty, you know, and uh, have a look at them and see, see what sort of imagery I was producing at the time when I first Got a camera. Now this camera represents uh, the start of my journey in photography. So it's really, this is why I suppose it's really nice to find it because there's so much nostalgia attached to this little instrument here. It's, uh, it's quite interesting because I'm a digital illustrator and a graphics guy. I've done lots of uh, stuff like that for the last, ooh, ooh, let me have a look, probably 21 years I've been working with digital imagery. Uh, and in illustration and graphics and stuff like that. So uh, at the time I needed a camera um, in order to get imagery with which to illustrate from, you know, rather than buying expensive stock for photography and stuff like that. So uh, I kind of got using it straight away. Now, I, I was fine art trained. I did my degree in fine art. And um, when I started using this little camera, uh, sort of, you know, composition, uh, framing, color, um, subject, depth of field, everything kind of made sense to me because, because, of that, what, because of my training in, in art and creativity and stuff like this. So I quickly uh, realized that photography for me was really interesting. I, I liked it. It was like, for me, it was like making instant art, like, bump, you know, the press of a trigger, there, it's an image. Um, and then I became fascinated, I really came interested with how many different things one image can be, you know, how many different things you can do with it. I mean, the, the very obvious thing is like changing something from colour to black and white. That's a very simple thing to do, you know, if the, if the image sort of lends itself to that. Um, you know, which often images do. You can, I mean, I images can be brilliant edited in hundreds and hundreds of thousands or infinite different ways, you know. This is what fascinates me about imagery. Uh, you can do so much with them, and especially in the digital age, you know, Digital cameras came along and allowed us as creatives to do something different or operate differently, work differently. Our workflow changed and uh, the way we used imagery changed certainly. You know, the speed in which you can take things down, load it to a computer and sort of work on it immediately. Open up Photoshop or whatever image-based uh, program you're using. You're there, you're kind of there and sort of right into it straight away. But this, this little thing, this thing was just represents to me it represents kind of the beginning of my journey in photography, absolutely. And um, I, <laughs> finding it and just, oh, it's like, wow, there's my, oh, that's my first camera. I was so excited to see it there, sitting there. 
Uh, but yes, yeah, certainly what I really want to do is get it working again. That's my primary objective now. I'm going to get this little thing working. I'm, I'm going to have a go with it, see what it does. And what's really interesting, I had a look in here, um, and it was the, not the, I mean, the batteries are gone. The batteries are kind of, <laughs> I've got to dig them out somehow. But this thing, this is mad. We all use flash cars, compact flash and micro cars and whatever else going on. That thing, it's like a, looks like an after eight mint. It's like, I don't even know what it is. I don't know what you call it. It's got no discernible markings on it particularly. Let's have a look. Smart media, it says actually. Smart media, it's a smart media card. 32 megabytes. Can't get along on that these days, can you? But um, but that's all I've got to play with. I hope hope it's not corrupt because I'm never going to get an end, another one. Well, I might do if I looked, but you know, there's not many of these about. I doubt. To, but it, so I'm going to clean it up anyway. Get it working and we'll have a play with it. I'm going to find some old imagery that I used to have that I made years ago using this camera, and I'm going to make some new imagery with this camera and see and compare the two. See, yeah, see, see what we come up with. It's going to be a bit of a bit of a fun journey, I think. Uh, so uh, and I'll. I'll let you know how I get on. So I went away and um, tried to dig those batteries out, which I've managed to get out, you know, a bit of prizing. Uh, and fortunately, all the contacts came out with it as well. The, <laughs> the batteries have been in that, that long that they'd eroded everything in there. So unfortunately, the camera is pretty dead to be honest with you so uh, which is sad because like i really wanted to get that working again i was really looking forward to sort of playing with it and i'm gonna go with it again just for nostalgia's sake but alas it wasn't to be but what i did do is uh i did go and find a large amount of images that i used to take with this uh, little machine back in the day so um it was a fascinating journey digging through old DVDs and CDs. These CDs look like sort of, you know, they're not going to exist for too much longer because they, they do this some certain amount of degradation goes on with CDs. Um, so I think I'm going to have to transfer, if I want to keep it for, you know, forever, I'm going to have to transfer some of that onto a hard drive, which is going to be a time consuming job. You know, who likes doing that? I don't. So, but whatever, it is what it is. So, um, yeah, um, anyway, I, I dug some imagery out. Um, that you know sort of represented the type of things that i started taking photographs with with this little camera um when i set on set out on my journey with this thing it was like a you know um as i said before it was something that something i needed from an illustrative point of view i needed to sort of get images and um, to start doing sort of different graphics with and stuff like that um so these these are some examples and basically uh, to start with um a lot of what I was doing is just putting the camera at anything, you know, and, and sort of having a feel for it and getting an idea of, you know, the type of things that I wanted to shoot. And there's lots of like kind of uh, landscapes that I had a look at. I mean, we spent a lot of time at Scotland once upon a time many years ago um, and on the Kyles of Butte. And just around the corner from where we used to stay, you could see the Isle of Arran over the water. Um, we used to stay in a place called Tynabruic uh, in Cames. And so it was an absolutely stunning place. So I used to nip around the corner and there was the Isle of Arran um, stretched out in all its beauty and all its glory across the water. So, you know, there's a little shot just here of that. Um, haven't done too, too much to it. It's kind of almost off the camera. There's a little bit of tweaking here and there. Not, not much, you know, just contrast and what have you. Uh, and, and whilst we were up there, um, when you're in Scotland, especially around that area, you see a lot of, there's a lot of forestry commission woods uh, where they take down trees quite a lot and they they strip all the trees of all the branches and they stack all these logs by the side of the road so quite often you drive past like a huge pile of logs um, and this is this is a shot from it's kind of side on i've turned it upside down it looks a bit like the giant's causeway now um, but that's you know that's just something that I've, i was messing around with and that's a shot of the olympus um yeah i quite like that so and again you know this little pathway there's this pathway that's leading down uh, I think it was a churchyard, and this was kind of like across the road from where I lived at the time. So I was get, getting out into the world and starting to have a feel and a, and a play with this camera. Not a great shot, this one. It's a bit blurred, but I kind of liked it. Kind of liked it when I found it and thought I'd include it in this in this video. This next one, this is from uh, this is again back in the cars of Butte, looking across the water from the place where I used to stay. 
It was handheld. You know, you know, you could see like there's, there's there's no dynamic range in this camera images at all. You know, it's like really fuzzy, especially in dark conditions. It just is. You know, the quality of image is just not there at all. But we are talking about a 1.3 megapixel camera, so you know we can't really complain. Um, but you know, it did its job, and at the time um, I got these shots. It's nice to go back and look at them. This is uh, another shot that I did. Um, I think it was just a cactus, but I kind of like the symmetry. Not a brilliant shot. I've included it in this just to sort of, again, sort of show you kind of an example of the things that I started to shoot and start to be aware of. Um, and then obviously out in the world, you'd find bizarre things. You know, I found this chair that somebody just dumped. Don't dump things in nature, guys. It's just not on. But, you know, in this occasion, it was an item of interest and um, took a shot of it. Um, bit of editing involved, nothing too drastic, you know, just a bit of contrast and some bit of colour correction in there. Um, and then there was this glass, you know, this orange juice. I was very much looking at sort of, you know, framing things and putting things together that, that I might be able to use for flyers or might be able to use for illustrative techniques and processes and stuff like that. So this is kind of where this idea came up and obviously set it all up with a bit of light behind it. Um, <laughs> obviously I am I'm no product photographer. You know, especially back then, this was when I was starting out. So it's kind of like, but I like it. You know, it's, it is what it is. It's a glass of orange. And I remember doing some some stuff with it, some graphics uh, and putting some low, uh, putting some words and sort of fonts across it. And uh, I think I think I did this kind of jazzy idea. I can't find it. And I didn't want to sort of recreate it because I thought that was a bit just, you know, I just, well, I just didn't, to be honest with you. It is what it is. It's kind of left in the past there. Um, if I had have found it, I would have showed it you. But... Yeah, I think I think I just kind of kind of jazzy poster with it and uh, added some elements to it. Um, this and then there's these these this this uh, image. This is a pyrus. Now a pyrus is a very beautiful plant. Basically, um, every kind of spring, early summertime, it shoots out lots of new growth, and that growth is always pink and red, and then eventually it turns to the green leaves to match the rest of the shrub. But I quite like this uh, shrub, and I was I remember taking a lot of photographs of this. Uh, and basically, I think I did sort of like a, a, a kind of um, an image where there were lots of these in, lots of these photographs in a grid, uh, and it looked very kind of Japanese style sort of graphic. Um, so I was playing around with this, and, and I really like sort of the shape of the leaves and the colour of it, and sort of just the feel of this plant. So a couple of shots from that, and one of one of these is black and white. You can see sort of a bit more detail in the leaves with this black and white shot. Um, and I kind of like the depth, you know, that, that kind of light and shade aspect to it. And again, you know, just playing around and, and having a best mess around with the camera, seeing what it could do. And um, these are some shots now. These were some sleepers, some railway sleepers. They'd been dug up and kind of left on some sidings. I was in this, um, I found this yard somewhere, um, where near, quite close to where I live, where there were lots of kind of old train engines and um, all sorts of bits and pieces lying around. And there were these kind of old train wheels and cogs and sleepers and all sorts of sort of heavy, sort of heavy, heavy uh, machinery sort of lying around, um, just been left to rack and ruin basically. So it was interesting to sort of walk around there and photograph them. So this, these sleepers are kind of full of oil. I quite like sort of all the colour and the texture in, in that kind of how they'd been sort of plant there. So I obviously did this composition with that main main sort of. Um, piece of wood in the centre that had been sort of, de um, sort of some degradation had happened to it and kind of been eat the wood's been eaten away a little bit. I kind of like that, so I remember sort of that being a shot that, that interests me at the time. And this cog, huge cog, again, really bit of old machinery just lying around. And I kind of I was messing around with composition, sort of looking at thirds, looking at how I could sort of make this the, these items interesting at the time. Um, slight bit of colour correction involved there, not too much again. Um, and again with these wheels, uh, same yard, you know, same time. And I was also looking at sort of leading lines and sort of playing with that idea of things and trying to trying to figure out how you know how to compose images properly and how to get the best of kind of what it was I was looking at and stuff like that. So great journey. And this is there's some couplings there of an old wagon, and again these old trains, these old engines that were just left in this yard. Really fascinating um, and they're kind of beautiful in their own right. These things. That, you know these old relics of industry kind of just sat there um been discarded and you know you could climb up inside them and go and have a look around there was, there was nobody about so uh, i spent some time sort of 
grabbing a bit of imagery and just being generally interested in them and sort of having a look. I kind of like that kind of, I, I like sort of nostalgia. I like looking back at old, I love old engines and, you know, old machinery and sort of having a look at where we've come from sort of, you know, in an industrial way, you know, kind of like, you know, the things that we, the things that have shaped modern society over time. And, you know, it's great to look back at them and it's great to sort of record them and be aware of them and sort of, sort of know where we've come from sort of thing. So that's kind of why I like, I like these things. Um, and again, there's a disc bus. A beautiful old coach. Now, I was down, out on the East Coast in a place called Skegness when I saw this. Just parked in a car park. So I went and grabbed the shot. Again, this is on this uh, little Olympus as well. This 1.3 megapixel camera. And you can see in this, this image that it's a bit grainy. You know, there's, 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 there's no sort of real quality to the image apart from the fact that the image is, for me anyway, you know, it's just the front of a bus. I get it, you know, but it's, it's a shot. It's a shot that I liked. The quality is just not there at all in terms of this little camera. But I did have a lot of fun with it. I did have a lot of fun. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny sort of digging these old images out and looking at them and going, oh, you know, it's, a bit, it's a bit bad, that's a bit grainy, it's a bit poor, but they are what they are, you know. Good journey. Uh, this one's a butterfly. I did the classic sort of suck all the colour out of the soil in this shot, you know, and leave just the colour in the butterfly. Now, you know, it's a bit gimmicky, is that sort of leaving sort of just one colour in an image, spot colouring or whatever you want to call it. It's kind of, it's all right, it is what it is, you know. I have done it, I probably will do it in the future, you know, I'm, I'm not immune to that type of thing. It depends what it is, I think. It has its moments, it has its place. Um, but I think I think with this one, it was kind of like, well, you know, the soil's pretty grey anyway, so taking what colour is out wasn't going to make too much of a difference. And it kind of, you know, it, it kind of made focus on that butterfly or that more intense sort of thing, so, so it punched that colour. Uh, so I remember doing that, a simple, simple centre framed image, but you know, again, um, I was learning and messing around with the camera. Uh, this next one was kind of fly, the Fly Agaric Mushroom. Now, you don't often, well I haven't really ever often come across Fly Agarics in the nature, I think they're pretty pretty rare. Um, now, and they're beautiful, you know, this, you know, artists have used them over the time, they're sort of heavily linked with that kind of like, get out your head culture sort of thing. Um, but I came across this. This was in Scotland, um, and it was fairly. It was a fairly good specimen. It was kind of um, almost intact. You can see at the bottom there that this uh, something's either had a go at it, or somebody's kicked, something's kicked it, or it hasn't formed properly, or whatever it is. I'm, I'm not sure. But it, it was beautiful and just a normal shot. Try to frame it so it's kind of like set, uh, just left of centre frame. Try to include some of the foliage around it. Uh, and I could, it was a nice photo. It looks all right, you know, not too bad. Um, and again, just an item of interest, something that was that was interesting to me at the time and recorded for prosperity. It's there, you know. Now, um, again, sort of foliage, flowers. Uh, I used to photograph a lot of that. Now, this is this this plant here is called Aubrecia. Uh, it's a beautiful sort of uh, a flowing plant that hangs over walls and stuff or, uh, around springtime in, in Great Britain, uh, and it's very beautiful. And I used to photograph stuff like that quite a lot, um, and then. Just a, as a way of example of how I was using some of these things at the time early on, um, the images of this camera were just about good enough to use for sort of doing graphics and stuff like that if you used them in a sensible way, i.e. small in an image somewhere, because blowing them up wasn't really an option because the quality wasn't there. So, But I do remember producing these postcards um, at the time for somebody. And um, it was about life, the, 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 the title was Life's Elements. Uh, and, uh, and I photographed this, the, the Aubrecia certainly that I've just mentioned. I also photographed some child's uh, climbing frame and you know uh, it was a brand new part that had been built but I kind of like the colours and sort of the and how all the shapes kind of sort of merged into each other and all these angles and colours and just kind of it just I just like them so I took some photographs of those uh, and also what I did was I laid did an experiment with other things as well I remember sort of laying out a, uh, some white paper this was out in I did it in my garden uh, a piece of white paper and I made a grid on this piece of white paper just putting dots down sort of every I think it was about uh, every two or three centimeters or something like that and then um, standing all these nails upright on each of the spots and forming this this kind of like sort of um, image this this image that I could photograph that was of interest it was a bit it was a bit odd a bit different um, just nails standing on the head but I kind of like you know when you're producing graphics and stuff like that you you, know, you have a bash at anything and 
you have an idea come to mind, you, have, you, you know, you try it, it either works or it doesn't. These are one of those things that I really liked. It worked. It just, uh, it just, I don't know what it was, what it represents. It was just a graphic that kind of, you know, it was a bit funky. So uh, these these postcards, then I made these postcards from those three sets of, uh, of photographs and um, as a series and they got printed and, and produced and sent out into the world and they were quite interesting but you know so you know I, I was using this camera this little digital camera for some professional work early on so it was good it was good to do um and as i said earlier i mean w one of the reasons why i wanted um a, a, a camera at all um, was because i wanted to photograph things which with which i could sort of move um take into the illustrative process and sort of do some drawings with and create fun funky graphics from and as a uh, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but like kind of one of my really early influences I've mentioned in a, in a previous uh, video of mine actually you can see that video here when I'm talking about graffiti and um, I, I, I was a kid when graffiti sort of came to prominence and I loved it You know, it was just unbelievable and I think kind of that urban style that urban gritty kind of uh, Art scene has always stayed with me and it's kind of informed my artwork moving forward in my life and, uh, and stayed with me to this to this day really um, so, but, but these photos now kind of represent exactly what I was talking about earlier about, you know, making graphics from phot photography. So this, um, this shoot here is basically, uh, it was a friend of mine. A lot of my friends have got used to me now and I point a camera at them and go, oh, yeah, all right, or whatever. Yeah, no, and they'll, they'll, po they'll pause for a photograph. They'll either bust a pose, you know, or they'll just go, you know, whatever it is, but you know, I, I, I they've, they've kind of got used to me, and, and they're, they're not too bad with it. So I, I, and they got used to that early on. It's, you know, the, the, most of my friends now, like just don't just ignore it. You know, if I'm taking photographs, they, they can expect you know to have one or two of them um, sn uh, fired away and, and kept in the archives for one reason or another. But anyway, this is my friend Simon, and. Um, uh, this initial image is kind of straight off the camera at the time. Uh, obviously, I set the lighting up a little bit, um, or, or situated him in lighting that was sort of favourable for the photograph. Uh, and this second image is the same photograph, uh, but I've just done a bit of kind of treatment to it, black and white treatment, and I've laid some texture over the top just to make it a little bit more interesting and a bit more funky to look at. And as I said, you know, one of the things that I am absolutely fascinated in is how many different things one image can be. Uh, it, it, it's it, it's something I don't know. It just boggles my mind. You know, you can you can change it to black and white. It's a dead simple thing to do. You can duplicate it. You can lace it over itself. You can blur it, extrude it, spread it out. Oh, just it's endless what you can do to images. Add textures. Add different colours. Add different elemental photographs. Add text. You know, I, I love. I just absolutely love what you can do with and two images it's, it boggles the mind but this this is just a very simple bit of process that i did to this and i did a bit of texture did this recently by the way this this bit of uh, this edit was done sort of a couple of weeks ago just for the purpose purpose of this video really so um uh, and this is a very similar photograph same guy uh, same mates uh, and you know i i produced then this graphic from it um, which is kind of a style that i developed and, and has stayed with me all those years ago and it's, it's kind of moved on and changes and, and, and blah 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 but yeah um, that that was very much kind of why I wanted this camera and why I wanted to sort of capture images with you know with which to do this sort of uh, this process with so it was quite interesting again uh, a shot of me just in front of my light box a self-portrait uh, nothing spectacular but I, you know it's funny it's a memory I remember doing it and it's kind of you know I remember it from the archive so I've just dug it out to show it in this in this video uh, and talking about self-portrait there's another one here not a great photo it's very blurry very grainy but I've, I like it as an image um, I think it's kind of it has it kind of draws you in it has some um, I don't know it, it, it's, it's one of those things you kind of look at it and go what is that you know is it an eye it is an eye and I remember doing the same sort of process with this that I mentioned earlier you know adding texture and, and, and graphics and text and, and doing funky things to it again can't find can't find the things that i did to it you know i think they've long gone but it's nice to have these photographs anyway um and uh, uh, you know back when i had this camera I, I had two young brothers i still have two young brothers they're sort of in their late teens and early 20s now 
but uh, way back in the day, if I asked them, you know, to pose for me, bless them, they always did do, and uh, they're always up for a photo, photo sesh, and they always played up to the camera. They still do, by the way. Um, the smashing lads, and um, yeah. So these these were just a set of images that I took way back. Um, this first one, actually, funnily enough, my my father, who's who likes his um, creative processes as well, he's a great artist. Um, he did a he did a graphic for his uh, wall. I don't have a photograph on it. I can't find a photograph of it, unfortunately. I should have one, really. A bit poor of me, but never mind. Um, but he did a beautiful graphic of this uh, that he that he's got on his wall at home. So he he was t quite taken with this image and wanted to do something with it, which is which is great. I was very proud of that. Um, it was lovely to see. Um, and then obviously again we talked about sucking all the colour out and doing a bit of spot colouring and ah, it, you know, you. It happens every now and then. Now this is a, one of my younger brothers with a banana. So what have I done? Yeah, I changed it to black and white and left the banana colouring, you know, blah, blah. It is what it is. Uh, uh, and a couple more shots of him. And is is uh, Jake and Ethan, they're called. Ethan's, these are shots, a couple of shots of Ethan. That's Ethan pointing to his nose when he was a little baby. And this is a shot of Jake. Jake always loved to play up to the camera. Uh, and as I said, you know, this is kind of like a, this is a graphic that was produced from that image, you know. Uh, I took it through that process and gave it those treatments and and ended up with this kind of sort of funky urban graphic. So that's kind of very much what I was playing around with at the time. Uh, and this is what they look like now. These are two kind of recent shots on my on my Canon gear. So these weren't off the, that Olympus. I just want to throw these in basically uh, just to show you that they're the strapping young lads now. There's a bit of ambiguity to these images as well because I've got it all silhouetted and dark and blah de blah. Not that I'm hiding anything, but just you know, just thought it was funny to be honest with you. So there they are now, and uh, yeah. So um, that was that. that you know, my, my brothers still get photographed quite a lot, and um, you know they they're used to me putting a camera at them, which is cool. Uh, and then this last set here, basically just to sort of round off, um, I was working with a guy some years ago and we were producing uh, photographs for stock imagery, uh, a guy called Alex, um, and he's a good photographer himself, but we were, were kind of like, a, I don't know, there was, I remember just sitting him down one day, can I kind of do some portrait shots of you just with this little Olympus? He was like, yeah, great. Um, and I've used them, uh, I've used these images of Alex quite a few times. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think just from a portrait point of view, they were quite interesting. I quite like this this kind of moving towards this one, sort of moving towards the camera with that hand and kind of like, you know, I just like the expression on his face. And I'd asked him to do a few things for me, like looking up and, and getting different shots, like this one here. Um, getting some profile pictures of him from the side and just and just asking him to pose in different ways. Uh, but this particular shot here, this, this shot was something that um, I did this graphic from initially. I, I used that one um, photograph to, to do this illustration from, to do the drawing from, and then I, I, I reintroduced the same face three times to, to make it look like there's a few people peering in this image. And I've always liked this image, it's been quite nice. And then moving forward, some, some time later, I did this secondary graphic from that same image, which is this one, it's just basically called Oi. It's that kind of Oi! kind of you know looking looking straight down the lens sort of thing um and at the time um I, I remember sort of being part of a kind of a creative hub of people and there was a chap called andrew um who who was a, he made carpets and he saw this image and he said oh you know it'd be really great if i could make a carpet out of this and i, I was like what a carpet he says yeah like a rug and i was like Absolutely, yeah, go for your life, you know. So we so we discussed it and got together and he shared some ideas or shared his ideas of what he wanted to do. And he just wanted to do a straight image from it, basically, because he kind of thought the image was striking. And uh, after I'd seen his processes and kind of how he worked, I was like, well up for it, you know. I was like, that was well interesting. So he took it away and he took the image away. Um, and this is what he came up with. This is the process. Firstly, you, you, you kind of draw it out in reverse on the back of... of some material that you use, some Hessian material or whatever it is they use as a base. Uh, and then with a gun that very much looks like um, very much looks like a drill. Um, it, it shoots threads and you can uh, you can change this gun to have different types of threads, different lengths of threads going through the pile to, to create the pile, should I say. Uh, and, and, the, and the process is absolutely fascinating. But he did an incredible job 
of making this rug here here it is this is the process of it so these images are just showing you kind of how it's marked out and then the initial kind of um first few sort of um threads that have been put into in, you know in, into that sort of hessian or whatever it is i think it's hessian we'll find out but that's the first through the first through threads that i've gone through in that process of making this carpet and then this is the finished piece here and it, it was incredible that's made out of basically wool coming being shot through this you know the pre it's a rug <laughs> it, it's it's a carpet it's absolutely marvelous um and i was just blown away really by by what he had done with that image and um and isn't that incredible you know you you can do what you do with images and somebody else has an idea and takes it and they have a completely different process creative process than you uh and they end up doing something completely different with it again i it comes back to this love of mine of like you know what you can do with one image it's just it fascinates me i'm absolutely fascinated by kind of like what you can do with one image imagine what you can do with multiple images you know that's where my mind goes you know but that's just brilliant uh, absolutely marvelous 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 piece of work um his name was andrew and he owns a uh, um it's still going by the way he makes some incredible carpets uh it's area rugs it's called if you want to have a look i'll put a link uh underneath if you want to go and check his work out it's, it's it's fantastic and there are some videos on his website of how he actually does it so which are worth looking at to be honest with you um but yeah so anyway you know it's fascinating to go back and have a look at these things and the, the, these you know all of that all of this creation creative stuff out of that little where has it gone there it is out of this little you know 1.3 megapixel olympus c920 zoom um absolutely marvelous little thing obviously obsolete now in terms of of, of of equipment and kind of quality of equipment but you know that's my journey that's where my journey in photography started and of course um i, I moved forward then i mean photography just became one of my processes one of the things i absolutely adore and love i do it professionally now i shoot weddings i shoot family shoots i shoot bands I shoot absolutely just about everything. I love going out into the world. Obviously, if you've seen my work before, capturing uh, sunsets, sunrises, and you know being involved with the landscape uh, uh, and getting those things too. So, but but this was this all started from this little camera out in the world and just um, having a bash and, and finding out what you know what photography meant to me. Um, so I, you know that's my journey, and um, it's it's just you know like. It, it's nice to look back on. It, it all started from wanting to do graphics. You know, like this t-shirt, hey. If you, that's one of mine. And of course, if you would like to own one of these things, by the way, I, I sell them. So um, I'll put a link underneath for that as well if you want to go and have a look. There's a range of uh, my, my graphics on t-shirts. If you'd like to grab yourself a, a t-shirt of mine, that would be superb. Links underneath, yeah. But um, thanks for tuning in. I uh, really appreciate you dropping by. Um, and, and listen to me waffle again about, about imagery and sort of graphics and stuff like that. It is very much an absolute love of mine. Fascinating to have found this camera. Pity I couldn't get it working. Really is a pity about that, actually, because I'd love to have had a go. I'd love to see what it does still. I did actually have a look online to see if I could buy one. There were one or two for sale, but I just thought, yeah, no, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not that bothered. But, but this journey's been nice nonetheless. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. So uh, till next time, see you later. Bye for now.